Hey kids, Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now, the old bike news review this January 2019 went on a bit long, so I've made it a two-parter. So stick around and stay tuned. This is part two of the January bike news review. Okay, so only two papers to go through uh, in this part two of the bike news review, but again, many stories to go through. So uh, grab yourself a brew uh, and let's see what uh, what's in the bike news for this part two of the January review. I, don't know whether I might break these up in the future. We'll see how this one goes. First story I've picked out here, in fact, two on this page. Number one, um, Norton, what is this one? Here we are, Norton Boost, here we go. Uh, Norton have struck a multi-million export deal with Japan that should see an extra thousand motorcycles built. This is amazing. This is uh, the Japanese Prime Minister was over uh, visiting recently and he said that the deal's worth five million. This has got to be good for uh, Norton. Extra investment. Norton are doing great anyway. Um, they're just building a new factory, aren't they, to build the new 650 uh, bikes that they brought out. And now with this extra investment uh, in Japan, that's got to be good news. Isn't it, isn't it funny how tables have turned? Norton, a classic old English motorcycle manufacturer, now being invested in by Japan. Who would have thought that 30 years ago? It's great how things swap around, isn't it? Okay, that's that. And then this next bike that I want to show you is this one here. Uh, the Ultimate Learner bike uh, is the uh, um, headline here, and it's an MV Augusta. They've brought out this A2 compliant version of the Brutale 800 and the F3675. Amazing, amazing looking triple machines. Uh, and if you're not in the UK, A2 compliant is just, A2 is just a, a sort of a for want of a better term, a lower grade motorcycle license. If you're a bit younger, you can't ride a full power motorcycle in the UK. You have to have a full license for that. But when you're, um, I think between the ages of 18 and 21, I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong, you can get what's called an A2 license, which allows you to ride bikes up to a certain power. And now MV have brought out these bikes that fit that category. So if you are an A2 license rider, my goodness me, can you think of a better looking bike you can buy that fits that category? So the Brutale 800 and the 675, which is the sports bike, both beautiful looking bikes are now available um, for you to buy. Uh, if you want the uh, Brutale 800, it's 11,990, so not cheap. And if you want the F3675, that's 12,795. The great news is, once you've passed your uh, full license, you can get them de-restricted. You can't do them yourself, uh, but a dealer can uh, take, the, take the power restriction off. So that's a bike that you could buy when you're learning your craft, and then you could keep it for many years afterwards. Uh, absolutely beautiful looking machines. And I think a great, a great thing for an MV Augusta to do there. It's a shame more manufacturers don't do that. Triumph make a few good A2 bikes, by the way. They do a street triple that's A2 compliant, and some of the retros as well. But uh, well done, MV Augusta, for getting onto that, uh, onto that particular Bandwagon, for want of a better word. Okay, BMW's loose spoke woes. This is a story that popped up a couple of weeks ago in that the um, some R1200 GSs and R9T models that are with spoked wheels have started to have some issues in that some of them are loose. Now, they haven't re um, given a recall to this, but BMW is saying if a bike comes in, it's got loose spokes, we'll sort them out. But uh, MCN here is saying, you know, just if you've got one of these bikes, just check your spokes, give them a tap with a spanner, see if they sound anything different to the others, uh, and just feel if they're loose, because if they are loose, you're going to want to get onto your dealer and they will sort it out for you free of charge if you don't want to do it yourself. So uh, it doesn't affect all bikes, obviously, just those with the spoked wheels, but worth knowing. Um, I think if you've got seven or more uh, loose spokes, BMW will actually give you a new wheel. So it's well worth checking this out. Um, what um, uh, BMW are saying is that no one, there's been no um, fatal accidents or catastrophic accidents as a result of this yet. And it's, I think it's only bikes that are between January and February 2018 that are effective. So if your bike fits in that category, check them out, speak to your dealer, get it sorted, because you don't want to be riding around with loose spokes on your wheels, that wouldn't be good. Okay, that's uh, one of a number of recalls that uh, BMW had the last few years. That's cost these companies a fortune, but it's great that they're on top of it, you know, from a safety point of view. Okay, now next up, in part one, I mentioned the new TFT screen um, on the Triumph Scrambler, uh, and here uh, MCN have done a whole article on that on that new TFT. Initially, when I first saw it, I thought it looked a bit Fisher Price, a bit like a um, you know a toy TFT. But all the reviews have been great. Now I've seen this picture of it close up. Actually, I think it looks quite cool. That plus the fact that it um, does the GoPro connection that I mentioned in part one of the review. Um, just going to be brilliant for people like me that do take their cameras on the bikes. But generally speaking, looks really nice. Um, and I understand actually some of that functionality as well will be retro compatible with a software upgrade. If you've got an, uh, the old TFT on a Triumph, I think you can get the GoPro connectivity added. Don't quote me, but it's worth checking with your dealer on that. But anyway, the new uh, this is it, the new um, TFT screen that you're going to see on the Scrambler and on the new Rocket 3 as well, I think. Um, 
actually, I've kind of warmed to it. I think it's, I think it's looking good. So uh, I'm glad that they're developing it. The TFTs do vary, and I've always, I've criticised the Triumph TFT in the past. I thought it did look a bit toy town. This looks like it might be a bit better. The best TFT I've seen is without a doubt the big new one on the BMW GS and other models. That's just getting me pictures back. Um, but uh, yeah, this new one on the Triumph. Obviously, I need to see it in the flesh, but uh, it's starting to warm on me. The fact you can connect your GoPro, it's got turn-by-turn -turn GPS integration with an app on your phone, I believe. Um, I just like that. And you can control your phone and your music and all the rest of it. It's, good. it's going in the right direction, if indeed TFT is your thing. I still think there's still room for classic clocks on a bike, particularly on retros. The, um, the Scrambler... It's sort of a retro, so I'm, uh, you know, I think on that bike I'd probably rather have the twin dials chromed. But there we go. Anyway, that's what they put on there. So uh, that's that one. Next up, Triumph Rocket targets Ducati. Now I mentioned in part one of this uh, news review that uh, Triumph uh, have been seen testing a new Rocket 3, and we've seen in the last week, although it won't feature in this news review, uh, the new Triumph factory custom version of the Rocket 3 out. But uh, we are now thoroughly expecting a normal Rocket to hit the shops early 2020 so it's probably going to be a year away i may be wrong maybe it'll be maybe it'll be announced at this year's nec in 2019 but this is what it looks like it, i think it looks absolutely gorgeous they've, it looks a bit like they've taken the back of a diavel and bolted it onto the front of a of a more modern rocket for me that just looks a beautiful bike i, I really want to ride one of these and frankly i want one uh, if it sounds as good as it looks and it goes as good as it looks and it probably will do with a massive uh, engine in it i think it's a two and a half liter engine is what they're saying um we don't know yet because it's not been officially announced that bike is just going to be absolutely incredible, isn't it? Uh, anyway, let's just hope the pricing isn't doesn't put it stratospherically out of our price range. But I do like the look of that, and that too has that very same TFT on it. Look, so it will no doubt have the GoPro connectivity, etc. Can't wait to see and hear one of those in action. Okay, next up, MCN have done one of their um, comparisons here. Mile munching gladiators. They pit the BMW R twelve fifty RT against uh, Yamaha's uh, FJR thirteen hundred. The RT costing 16,700 and the FJR 1300 16,599. So they were within uh, a couple of hundred quid of each other. So it really is a good test to compare the two. I've never been lucky enough to find a Yamaha dealer that has an FJR 1300 on demo. So I've never ridden one, which is such a shame because I'd like to. It's a lovely looking bike and everybody I've spoken to have ridden one says it's great. I have though ridden the R1250 RT and there's a review coming up in the next few days. At the end of the video, I'll give you a, a bit of an update on what's coming up on the Missenden Flyer, uh, including the video on the R1250 RT. I really like it. Of course, it's got the new shift cam uh, technology in there now. They've updated it along with all the stuff that's on the new uh, R1250 GS. And they've done this uh, 250 mile test between the two. Uh, can't remember what the verdict was, so this will be a bit of a surprise. The RT, they've given four out of five. The FJR 1300, only two out of five, which is a bit of a surprise. Um, so what's the, the, basically they're saying, well, this isn't a surprise me having ridden the German one. It's got all the bells and whistles. The Yamaha is now looking a bit long in the tooth in comparison. Uh, especially when you consider the prices are much the same, but uh, both beautiful bikes. If you're just an on-road tourer, either one of these is gonna is gonna you're gonna love. Do watch my R1250 RT video coming up soon um, because I love that bike as well. For me, the uh, the Yamaha looks better. That's the only thing I don't like about the RT really. Um, watch my video for more details, but it's the the looks of it. I think the front now has just gone a bit too bulbous for me. Um, but having ridden the, uh, I don't know if you saw my review of the um, Honda Goldwing, which was a bike that completely surprised me, a massive bike. I thought this is just gonna be horrible, but it rode beautifully. It's interesting to compare the uh, RT against that, given it costs a fraction of the price, half the price basically, than the Honda Goldwing. So look out for those reviews soon. Okie dokie, uh, last story in this particular paper, a powerful presence, new, but is it worth it? So this is the new Speed Twin that they had announced in the previous paper, they've now got to ride it. They've given it, uh, it's £10,500, hasn't that, that actually given it a star rating? They've said that uh, basically uh, the throttle response isn't as polished as recent Triumphs, um, but that may still be fine-tuned with the suspension. Speed Twin is classy, affordable, um, which rivals will struggle to keep in their sights. So when you compare it against things like, uh, you know, the Ducati Scrambler uh, bikes, they're saying that this is good value. And in fact, ten and a half grand actually, well, that's still a lot of money, Given this has got you know some very nice parts on it in terms of the electronics package etc., um, then yeah, nice bike. I, I'm looking forward to having a go on that. They're saying it's a lot more than just a comfy Thruxton. We shall see once we get a ride. It certainly looks nice. Uh, trouble is, there's now so many of these Triumph retro style bikes, isn't there? Which one do you choose? I mean, I just like the standard T120. And then when you throw in the new Scramblers as well, not just the the, the big new 1200s, but the Street Scrambler, which was my previous favourite of the Triumph retros. Now you've got this to consider. 
don't know, the choice is starting to get quite difficult, isn't it? What I'd like to see Triumph do now is to bring out some modern, brand new bikes, never seen before, new names, new chassis, new styles, uh, and surprise the bike industry. We know they can do retro, they're all great, keep them coming, but let's have some new bikes. We've all talked about the Daytona, haven't we? We'll see if that comes up, but let's get to, let's get some new bikes out of Triumph. Now, not, not, they're doing loads of new bikes, I'm not criticizing them for that, but not retro, some proper modern bikes that we can all lust over as well. Alrighty, we're nearly through it. We're getting to the last paper now on this uh, two-part extended review. Hope you're still with me. Uh, here we are, Norton V4, is it the real deal? They've actually ridden one, but we'll get to that story in a minute. Right, first story here, the revamped uh, uh, R3 Super Sports Starter Pack. Uh, basically, Yamaha have taken the R3, which is a bike I rode a while ago and actually quite liked, and restyled it, made it look like the R1. I think they've done a cracking job here. If uh, you're starting out on motorbikes and you like sports bikes, then this one is gonna be well worth considering. Puts out 41 bhp, may not sound like a lot, but if it's your first big bike uh, and your first sports bike, it's ample for the road 41, I tell you. 321 cc uh, engine on it, it's got better forks than the previous R3. The new styling, as I said, it's good for 118 miles an hour. You know, you're not going to be doing that on the roads, really, are you? £5,299. I think that's great value for a bike of that type. They've revamped the LCD display as well. It's not full colour, but it looks a bit more R1-esque. I think that's a definitely a bike worth considering, again, if you're on A2 licence holder and you're interested in sports bikes, check out the new Yamaha R3. Not sure when it's available. Uh, a quick glance here, can't see. But anyway, uh, coming soon if it's not already out. Second story from this week's paper. Here we go, Triumph Go Full Factory. And this, I, I mentioned before that the new Triumph Factory custom range is starting to, uh, starting to get out there in the press. So this is the new Thruxton and the new Rocket 3 TFC, which we don't have the prices for yet. But the new um, uh, Thruxton looks absolutely amazing, if you like calf racers. They've added the fairing, they've added lots of bling on it. They've put, uh, it's got an uprated engine as well, slightly lighter than the old Thruxton, lots of carbon. Uh, if you like that sort of thing, that may appeal to you. Personally, it doesn't do it for me, the, the Thruxton. I appreciate it's a great bike technically, but it doesn't do it for me on the looks. I'm much more interested, as I said before, about the new Rocket. Two and a half, uh, 2,500 cc inline triple engine. They're expecting 180 brake horsepower plus. New chassis, single-sided swing arm. Unbelievable, 180 brake horsepower. That thing literally is gonna go like a rocket. Can't wait to ride it. Come on, Triumph, get it out there as soon as possible. And let me have a ride, even more importantly. Okay, KTM bulks up for big adventures. This is the new 1290, a bike that I loved riding, but I criticized the looks of it. KTM's, there's not many of them that I, I can really like the looks of. I like the Super Duke R, but it's not, it doesn't really say, oh, look at me, I'm a lovely looking bike. They've got to sort their design out, and they've had a crack. It looks like it with these spy shots of the new KTM 1290. Uh, new overhaul uh, to basically rival the um, 1250 GS is what um, MCN is saying. It's got a lower center of gravity. They've done some clever things with the fuel tank by having the fuel come down the side slightly to lower the center of gravity. That's gotta be a plus thing. Uh, that was one of the criticisms I had of the big KTM Super Adventures when I rode them was that the center of gravity was too high. If they fix that and now the looks are a bit better with this new fairing arrangement then this could well be a contender. So don't know when we're gonna see this. They're saying delivery spring 2020, so it's again, well over a year away, but uh, I think that's a move in the right direction for KTM. What do you think? Looks really good to me. Okay, and last but not least for the paper review, then we'll get on to some parish notices. Uh, the first V4S has broken cover. This is the Norton sports bike. Uh, I've got a better picture of it here. This is, it looks amazing. Here we go, look at this picture here. Absolutely incredible looking bit of kit. I love this chrome finish. These were announced again, I think we saw them at the NEC back in 2017, and they all, we were all hyped up and excited. They got sold very quickly. The first uh, customer bikes are now uh, starting to become available. The bike that MCN rode is in fact the first production bike off the production line. So, you know, here we are a year later. Let's hope Norton do better with the new 650s, which again, we're all excited about seeing. But uh, if you put your order down, it's over a year until you get it. That's just rubbish, isn't it? I, Personally, I hate waiting a month if you put an order down for a new vehicle, but a year is ridiculous. Anyway, that notwithstanding, um, Chad, uh, the reporter, Adam Child, has um, ridden this bike down in the south of France. Any bike's gonna be lovely in the twisty roads around Monaco, isn't it? But this looks absolutely brilliant. The road feels like it's from a Bond movie, and I have the bike to match, is, is what Chad says. He, he loves it, he's given it five out of five stars. Uh, 44,000 pounds if you want one of these. Um, he's saying that basically there are quicker bikes out there. If you want to you know, lap a track quickly, get a ZX 
10RR. There may be even uh, better looking bikes like the, you know, the Panigale perhaps, but if you want gorgeous and exclusive, then the Norton is the way to go. And I have to say, I'm a big fan of uh, British bike manufacturers. This Norton looks absolutely beautiful, doesn't it? I love, why don't more uh, bike manufacturers do these chrome type finish? Maybe it's just me, I'm attracted to shiny things like a Magpie, but uh, the Norton V4 SS looks absolutely beautiful. And they're starting to leak out onto the streets. I wonder if we'll ever see them actually on the streets or if this is another bike that will go into a garage and very, very rarely be seen in the wild. Anyway, there we go. So that's it for the bike news review uh, this month. Went on a bit long, I know, hence two parts. We'll see how that, maybe I'll do two parts next time. Let me know if you prefer a shorter video in two parts or whether a longer video for Bike News works. I, I talked about this a bit on my live stream the other day and I had some feedback people saying that um, depends on the type of video. If it's something that they can listen to in the car, just audio, like these news reviews, then they don't mind them longer. Uh, if it's uh, something else, then maybe shorter. But let me know what you think, whether you like shorter or longer versions of this. All right, I promised you some parish notices. There are a couple of things I want to tell you about that are coming up on the channel soon. Um, this Wednesday, uh, all being well, January the 30th, uh, my in-depth review on the Panigale V4, I'm going to be posting that up. I absolutely love that bike. It's on the screen here. You probably can't see it on the camera, but uh, wow, what a bike. This is, again, one of the few bikes I've ridden a lot of bikes. I've been very lucky the last year or so. Um, very few of them grab me and make me think, oh, I really want one of these. The V4 was one of those. So look out for that video on January the 30th. That's this Wednesday coming. Uh, Saturday the 2nd, uh, that's when the R1250 RT review goes up. Rode that a couple of weeks ago. Again, I expect that's gonna be, hopefully that's gonna be quite a popular video. I rode the RT a few years ago and that video did really well. So the R1250, much updated now. Look out for my video next Saturday on that one. Monday the 4th, um, I'll be doing my final Ben King interview. Uh, he's the round the world adventure, riding around the world on his CRF. I've put two episodes of that up so far. First one did really well. I really enjoyed talking to Ben. He's a fascinating chap to talk to. Uh, really um, enthusiastic about life. We could all learn a lot from his attitude, I think. Uh, first video went down well. I published the second video, in fact, while I was away, and I did it automatically. It didn't work properly, basically. Notifications didn't go out. So if you normally get a notification of my videos, you've not seen the second part of the Ben King interview, and you're interested, go to my my, um, main video um, homepage and you can and you can find the Ben King video there the second part if you've not seen it for some reason the publishing didn't work properly on that one hopefully I can get that fixed don't know why it wouldn't work work anyway the third and final part of that interview goes out on Monday the 4th of February February already incredible then Thursday February the 7th that's my next live stream so make a note of that February the 7th that's a, a Thursday 8 p.m. I'll be doing the live thing It'd be great if you could join me then we can have a chat I love all the feedback we get on that uh, we'll see how that goes um, and then just a quick note that you may be seeing me pop up on a few other channels as well in particular two wheels and a ponytail if you've not seen her videos go and check those out now there's a little video she put up um, yesterday a couple of days ago now when you actually see this video um, go and check out two wheels and a ponytail there's some stuff that will appear in there and Shaf uh, Turbo Shaf, if you come across him, Austrian, Austrian rider, watch his channel, there's some stuff coming up soon. And then also uh, my old friend Richie Vida will be putting some videos up soon, as has Lamb Chops Rides, already put a teaser up to a trip that we recently did this week in Spain. All of us together, we had great fun. Uh, Teapot One was there as well. Lots of videos coming up on their channels. If you don't already subscribe, go and check them out and, uh, and you'll hopefully might see me in some of their videos. And I've got some stuff coming up from that very trip as well over the next few months. They're a little bit different to what they've done um, and they will take a bit longer to come out. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. If you're fans of those channels too, uh, then we've done sort of a, a big uh, collaboration, I think is the YouTube term, isn't it? And hopefully it'll be the first of many because uh, as we said, we got like a house on fire. It was great fun, had a really good time. Anyway, okay, there we go. That's it for uh, January's Bike News. Hope that was of uh, some interest. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mr. Dunfly. Cheerio.